Welcome to The MacGuffin. I'm Spencer, and today I'm joined by the writer, director, inspiration of Short Term 12, Destin Critton. Um, previously, you had directed I Am Not a Hipster, which, I mean, blew up on the festival circuit as well, as Short Term 12 is. Short Term 12 is a story of um, a group of 20-somethings who are running a foster care facility, and it takes place, I don't know, what, what is the exact span of time in the film? It's it's a few months? Yeah, it's a little hazy. Okay. I mean, I think most of the film takes place over the course of a week, and then it and then it jumps ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, an amazing film, one that did very well at South by Southwest, won, was it, Audience Award, won the Grand Jury Prize. Let's start by sort of the beginning of this one. This is based upon a short film called Short Term 12 as well that did very well, which is based upon your uh, experiences working at a foster care facility. What exactly led you there and what exactly led you to think, you know, this would be a great film? Yeah, um, what led me there was the inability to get another job. And this was this was actually just when I graduated from college and... I I just I was job searching and it was really depressing because I couldn't get a job for like six months and and then my one of my friends uh, was working at this place he was an overnighter there and he he told me that they're they're hiring right now so I went in and I, did, I had no idea what I was getting into and it was it ended up like the first month was was the most terrifying month of my life I I felt so inadequate and so so scared to do something wrong um, and but over the course of two years it, it really did turn into by far the most impactful two years of my life where I I felt like I grew up the most and um, yeah it, it was uh, it was just something like those all the, the every day there's just so many questions that are implanted into your head working in a place uh, like that and and a, a lot of those questions stayed with me for a long period of time, and 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 then they came out in the screenplay. Was it always something you had intended to be a feature? I mean, was the the sh the short essentially like sort of a um, demonstration that look this could be an engaging film for people, or was that something that it was just like once the short did so well, you're like, well, why don't I make a feature of this? <laughs> yeah, more more of the latter. I I can't. I cannot think past a whatever I'm doing right then. And when I was doing the short, I was I'm just like I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this short. I'm not thinking like oh this could maybe turn into something bigger. I I um so yeah it I had no idea that the short would even connect with anybody. It felt like a very a very um, personal story. And I um, but once the short got out and I started seeing that that people connect with the subject matter even though it's it's a an environment that most people aren't used to um the themes are are universal enough that that a lot of people were connecting with it and that was inspiring enough for me to to take it into a feature it's sort of interesting to reflect on the feature when you're talking about like your experience as the new person, whatever, which really is very reminiscent of, was it Rami Malek mm -hmm. in the film? And yeah. then it's sort of funny to hear you talk about, you know, being the veteran, sort of like, you know, whatever, John Gallagher, Brie Larson, whatever. Is that sort of how you structured the film in terms of like your different sort of levels of experience were sort of represented by the different characters in the facility in Short Term 12? Or is this over analyzing and just being like well you know this is clearly representing that when it was just something like you're like i need a veteran i need a new person and i'm gonna just fill in the rest otherwise yeah i mean i i uh i mean i really connect with uh, personally with all the characters in the movie there's they're definitely uh i i understand every level of that but um yeah, I don't know. It might, it might, it might be, it might be looking a little deep. I don't, I, it wasn't like a logical thing when I, when I was creating it. I, I mean, it's sort of an incredibly well cast film. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Brie Larson, Caitlin Dever, um, Dever, Dever, Dever. Uh, I had been a huge fan on which was Unjustified. Which yeah, was great. She, She's phenomenal. Yeah, on that. she killed it on that. You have a very great cast in the feature one but you also had some really interesting people in the short film was a brad william hankey mm -hmm. who i'm a big fan of was there any sort of thought about bringing back 
more of the people from the original? I know there are a few who carried over, but w more of like bringing someone like him back, or was it just uh, you felt now that you had a feature film, you had a lot of different sort of pieces you had to fill that it was in a different story that it didn't necessarily transition over with those people from before? Yeah, I, um, I, I would have loved to, I mean, I'd, I'll work with Brad Hankey any day. Um, he was in my last film, I'm Not a Hipster, and uh, there, yeah, when this, this movie just became, I was trying very hard not to think about it as, as any sort of sequel or, you know, to the short. Um, and it, the, when, when I started writing the, the, the feature, I was initially writing it as an extension of the short, like with all the same characters, but the, the lead character of the short is a male. And, and, um, as soon as I, it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel fresh because I hadn't intended the short to turn into a feature. And when I changed the main character from a male to a female, every scene just felt different. It just felt like a different movie, even though some of the scenes are very similar, but it, it, it felt very different to me. And so, um, yeah, the the character we just casted for the characters, and I feel like I'm I'm very happy for. But I love the I I, I will definitely be working with everyone in the short again. <laughs> what, what was it like casting this film? Because you know, like as I said, like I like Brie Larson and Caitlin Dever, um, Dever, um, Dever, whatever. Um, <laughs> They're great actresses, but they're not necessarily household names. I mean, were you conscious of things like, you know, Justified at the point which you cast? I would imagine that would be too late in terms of when you were making this film to know about those kind of things. Were they, it was just serendipitous that you got these actresses just because they did great auditions, or were they people you had targeted going into it? Um, C Caitlin came in and auditioned and just blew everyone's mind like she was she was in, an incredible audition and um so that's how we got her but i i had seen her in justified and that i mean she was just she's like great. oh I mean, man for like such a young actress she's, she's got huge potential yeah clearly. yeah she she's an incredible actor and and brie um Brie, we, we offered the role to Brie. She didn't, she didn't audit. It was just a, a Skype call between her and I. And, and it was, uh, she was actually on the set of, um, she was, uh, no, she, <laughs> that was she, a great role too. <laughs> she was, she was on the set of, uh, of, of, um, why can't I think of Jump Street? No. Um, the, the new... The Spectacular Now. Spectacular Now. She's on the set of Spectacular Now. And we, we offered the role to her. I was, we were all just, big fans big fans of uh the, the roles that she's chosen and if you, it's interesting especially if you just start looking at everything that she's been in like even smaller little roles and you just watch them back to back to back it you just see this person changing you know every every character is just it's all i think oh, she's I'll, phenomenal. Yeah, yeah i think a lot of people don't even realize that it's a, that it's brie uh, and and I've had people be like, oh, watch, that was her? And because she really does uh, create these really interesting characters. And, and there's something about both her comedy and her dr uh, dramatic roles that you could tell that she's acting from the gut. And she's like just in the moment. And there's just things that she's doing that just feels very spontaneous and real. And that was what was exciting for, for me and for all of us. And and you know it was, it's also definitely exciting to take a chance on uh on somebody allowing them to have their first lead and and uh the the kind of excitement that comes with that it's, it's sort of an interesting question right there was there any pressure to put like i mean i don't know about the the production of it but did you feel any pressure to put like more famous people in it just so it's remarkable because that's one of the things like i've done limited work on indie films and i remember being in an indie film with tori spelling and sort of like it became so much about her being involved with the production more than her just being like even a i think she was in like six minutes of the film but it was like completely centered around tori spelling being in the production yeah i mean i there's definitely i mean I'm not gonna lie there's definitely talk about having bigger names in the movie um it it would it would just be a different movie people would be people wouldn't be going to see like 
um, this this new fresh cast, they'd be going to see what what this famous person might be doing again or something, you know. And <clears throat> uh, you know, for for me and for all of us, because most of the crew, we're all. Um, you know, this isn't, we're not veterans of this, and it, it felt natural and it felt really cool to us to be working with a cast who is also, you know, excited about about making a movie and doing something very different than we've done before because we're all pretty fresh still. And, um, yeah, it felt, it just felt right. What was the process like in terms of sort of balancing, you know, there, I mean, one of the things I love about this film is like, it is a very heavy story, but there's also a lot of humor throughout it. What was it like sort of balancing that process? Because there's one point, and I'm, I suspect you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, about like three quarters, four fifths of the way through, where I was just like, is this spinning off into a very different <laughs> film than I was initially anticipating? I was a little bit worried there for a moment, but it, it all it all comes together very beautiful. <clears throat> yeah, I, I sort of have a tendency in when I'm writing and in life to to um, anytime things start to get a bit dramatic I throw the joke in you know uh, and there's a that I'm, but, but that's if it, it fit with this environment because that's that's how everybody while I was working there that's how everybody survives both the kids and and the the staff members is through the use of humor and so there it's a you know it's very integrated into just that that living and working environment is that you got to be able to laugh things off so humor was a, a, a huge part of of uh of the story and it was really important to to make sure that that it wasn't just a drama like we want the emotions of, of what what uh people are going through to be very real but i think um, humor is also as real and should uh and we wanted that to be an important part of it as well. Similarly, like Brie Larson's family, or sorry, life outside of the facility was one of the more interesting points of the story because there's a lot going on, you know. She's dating a fellow counselor. Their relationship gets pretty complex as the film goes on. How difficult was it balancing sort of the time spent with her outside of the facility versus focusing just purely on all the drama going on within this facility because yeah. there's a lot of different little storylines therein alone. Yeah, um, the 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 idea behind um, the the story is that you're following Grace uh, and through and every everything is is uh, affecting her and pulling out forcing her to to begin to deal with this stuff that she hasn't dealt with. And so the themes in and outside of the home that are happening, the little storylines that are happening, they're they're all doing the same thing to her and they're all affecting her and forcing her to to think about these things that she hasn't thought about since she was a teenager. And and so yeah, both were were equally as important to me and they and they also do the very the very same thing um the you know and it, every if you if you think about it every scene in the movie is kind of doing a, the same thing it's it's forcing her to to begin to deal with some of this stuff so the film does well at south by southwest it's been picked up was it synodyne is that mm -hmm. who's picked up for distribution it's coming out in august i believe mm -hmm. um is there a website that people can look up more information in advance of seeing it? Yeah, definitely. Shortterm12.com. Um, you can sign up for our mailing list, and we'll, we'll be sure not to send too many irritating emails. <laughs> spam. I'm, I just say spam. I'm, it's worth it. It's worth it, people. It's a great film. Um, and, and you can also sign up for it. Uh, we're updating our Twitter fairly often, and... and uh, you can follow us as we're going to different and festivals. That's what, short term twelve, I believe, is what. Yeah, short term is. twelve. Everything is right there. If you go to shortterm twelve dot com, we have our Twitter, our Facebook, and everything. All our buttons right there. You can just click them. Awesome. And for you personally, do you have any other films that you're working on at this point, or other things that people should keep their eyes on that you're working on, or do you have a website or Twitter or anything that people can follow you specifically? Um, I I have a Twitter which is. 
I mean, I, <laughs> I'm still pretty new to it. Um, I, I'm personally, I'm just, I'm writing uh, what I hope will be uh, either the next thing that I do, or um, I'm also reading a lot of scripts right now, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do next, but um, I hope it'll be all right. <laughs> and presumably you'll be telling people on your Twitter or something. Yeah. And what, what's your Twitter? Is it just your name? I think it's Destin Daniel. Okay. But but I'm also doing a lot of the the tweeting for short term twelve. So follow both kind of, of them. One, just of the to be same, safe. one of the same. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, good luck with the film, Destin. I just can't wait to see it get out to the world because I enjoyed it so much, and everyone who I've known who's seen it has loved it as well. So check out that and uh, check out more interviews at MacGuffin. That's MacGuff dot in, and uh, we'll see you later. Stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This tech don't even try to bite the side. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.